that Goku. Yeah. So, I mean, just call him, I guess we call him Goku. Yeah. But, but that might trigger somebody, so we have to be careful. We have oh, to no. That's, that's the opposite. Birdo is definitely the, the one so the So they, they go right into it. Um, Birdo is like an underground, really good Falco. Plays with the likes of Azusa, a Peach. Plays with Bob Money a lot. Um, Bob Money still plays? Uh, I don't know if he does, but back in 2012 and 2013, um, Birdo, Birdo, Bob Money, DBR, they all would play a lot in the Conquered region. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's unfortunate. You see that from a lot of players, the top players. Like, they, they don't ever want to see their team SD. Like, it's just, there's always like, um, dang, that's that makes sense. <laughs> like, it may be good for them in the long run. It's just like when you when good players want to play a good match, you know they, they never want to have, yeah. have someone mess up. So one thing that Bird is really good at in this game is he contains really well lasers, making it really frustrating. And his defensive game is pretty good. Um, it kind of reminds me of like similar to what Zangguzan and Stab would play when Stab used to play Falco. Um, he has a Birdo has a very similar style to them. Um, not as not quite as good as Zangguzan's, but um, I could definitely see like how his options are very similar. I can see the comboing yeah. sort of similar, nice and clean, but the neutral like yeah. options that he goes for. Um, I feel like he's not throwing nearly enough lasers. Well, it's battlefield. No, 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 no. <laughs> Have you seen Zangguzan? I have. <laughs> I, I've played him in tournament once. He throws. Like, if you go to his projectile counter at the end, it'll probably be, like, the two, three hundreds. Like, <laughs> a little exaggerated, but it just feels that way. Ooh. Ooh, which is a pretty good combo. Brought him around town right there. And the one thing that um, Birdo's really good at is he's good at reading rolls, and he barely missed at that time. But that's, like, one thing you have to be careful, because he's going to be suffocating you with a lot of lasers, and the temptation is just to roll. But then he doesn't actually go in with the aerial like most other Falcos. He just, like, drills in place, and it catches a lot of people. But as we say that, Fat Goku's brought this back. I, I, it was a little bit while ago, but if you rewind this VOD later on, you'll see that uh, Birdo did a rising dare on Fat Goku on a platform. As soon as Fat Goku blocked it, he did a short hop out of shield up there to catch Birdo before he landed. I thought that was amazing. <laughs> Wish I could instant replay that. Shouts to Kiki Green Squad. Uh, I wish I had a replays right now to see what you were talking about. Oh! Oh! That was like really, really good. And we got homemade waffles. We got Reason in the background. They're cheering their boy Birdo out. That NorCal love is definitely in the house. Um, it's not as vicious as it was in like 2010 where you'd have the Wombo combo and all the trash talk. Oh, uh, yeah. NorCal trash talk used to be really vicious. If you're the person from out of region, you just feel miserable, and you like lack confidence, and you just shrivel up. I feel like that's what SoCal is right now. They're very uh, aggressive. Yeah. Ooh! Goodness. I love, like, Shine Instant Burial. Like, it just, it's so satisfying to hear two of the hard hits at once. Yeah, like, it's, it's, I don't know how beneficial it is to comboing per se, but it'll definitely throw off your tech timers. Especially when he does like a fast, like, shine to dare. Uh, it'll also mess up your DI. Really good recognition there to get the up smash out of shield. That's how you know he's a fox man. Um, because that bear came out really slow, that's why the up smash out of shield worked. And that's like one of the unique things you learn over time is finding these um, unique timing windows for your character to fight the foxes and the falcos. Um, all right, now we're roughly even. But um, at, at, like when we watch like foxes and falcos play, you see the sh the, the aerial shine aerial or the spam shines. You're like, well, what what the heck do I do against this? But there are timing windows and there are counterplays to a lot of these. Yep. That you just need to you know just get used to. Ooh. That was a really, really good like read by Fat Goku. Just like, just gambles on the fact that uh, Birdo wasn't going to commit to coming on stage and just like throwing the up smash out there. That was like, <laughs> yeah. And on the age of like optimization, you don't see people go for too, too many reads anymore. So when you see them, it's, it's a little bit refreshing. And uh, 
it's it's just it feels like they're in their head, you know. Like yeah. we call that mind games, but like it's just you know it's just reads. I think reads today aren't so much micro scale in terms of like doing a, targeting a specific action, but targeting like kind of a set play, like in sports. Like so, you might pre-position slightly different based on the reads you have on how they're going to move. But it's nothing that's going to put you on a hard risk if you guess it correctly. Like your trade-off there is not so much like getting rewarded or getting hit right away, but so much as getting like a minor gain in stage position or forcing them onto a platform. Good coverage by Fakoku there. Recognizing the forward B, just turning around and giving party up smash. Up smash. I think for the most part, Fakoku is finding ways to move around the stage without getting stopped by laser, and that's really important. Oh, there we go! Ooh, good, good wave dash out of the shy. Uh, just ignores the hit stun. There. Well, blocks the hit stun and reacts in time for, for punish. A lot of times when people try to wave dash out of shield, they'll end up rolling. So it was really good on uh, uh, Birdo's part to. Oh my gosh. That's actually really hilarious. He thinks he's Fox right now. <laughs> that, that is Falco. It that, is. That is Falco. There you go. All right. Cool. Um, we just saw a couple oh. nervous ro rolls from Falco, and this is tournament stock. This is set stock run. Uh oh. Oh. Ooh. It's spaghetti everywhere. It's so scary when Falco gets something started. Oh no! But you're in the dungeon with Fox. You're in the dungeon with Fox. Oh. That was an amazing. Kid. Of Smash, by the way. The reason why that was amazing is because he specifically read the spot dodge. He could have gotten Shine, but he thought the spot dodge was coming, got rewarded. I've, I, personally, at that point, I probably would have uh, did a would have held held shield because he couldn't roll either way. Yeah. And if he got up attack, he can up to the shield. But he just was like, oh no. Nope. But he specifically was looking for that spot dodge. Yeah. Ooh, what a wait. So we saw the stadium counter pick work well for Fat Goku. Let's see how this counter pick works for um, Birdo. <laughs> we got some more cow homies uh, yelling in the background. Reason's going out of control. Reason is. Did we recently move up here? Um, I have no idea. He may have graduated from LA. Gotcha. Get money. <laughs> Get money. <laughs> Ooh. So one of the things that's funny is, um, even if you're the player that's benefiting from the background trash talk, sometimes it could be distracting to even the player that is not getting trash talk. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. When people start cheering me on, I feel like there's more pressure. <laughs> yeah, there, I see. Yeah. So like, it doesn't just benefit one player. It seems like it could hurt both players. Yeah. Um, Shines him out of the temple. All right. Let's see what you can get here. And Birdo's gone for that side B um, almost every time, and Fakoku hasn't really capitalized yet. So maybe he's saving up for a read later, where he watches Birdo go side B on stage and then maybe go for a grab. He punished it uh, pretty well last game. He just like outspaced the forward B and just like set up the up smash. But yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. But there are some times where he just didn't do anything, and I feel like that's one target where he can really abuse. Um, Birdo's panic recovery because, and as I say that, he goes for that B. <laughs> <laughs> um, it seems like, it seems like uh, it's 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 you have to react to it, and but you always like after you get caught by it so many times, you're like, oh, he's gonna change it up, right? Like, that, that's part of my game. You're gonna go 100% off in one type of recovery, and that's where Yomi comes in, right? Yeah. <laughs> you picked rock three times. Are you gonna do it a fourth time? No. You're gonna go scissors. Like, why'd you do that? <laughs> The rule of threes. Ooh, oh my gosh, I don't know. Crash Jazz in 2005. People were like, oh, how do you get at it? We used to call that a real chain grab. Like, back with down throw and back throws. There you go! Oh. Did he just walk up and grab? <laughs> Did he just walk up, grab him, down throw, and then expletive right. down smash? <laughs> All right, so back up who wants to tie this up. He's like just rushing in right now. Oh, he misses the zoo, but he still gets the upsell from like a tech mix-up. Ooh, what a great down smash. Oh, no! Yeah, is, uh, he's having a little bit too much fun. And one shine and one bad decision could the cost him. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, no, why? Okay, that 
looks like it's pretty. Oh my god. Oh my. my heart was racing for him. <laughs> I thought right there he might have got off again and tried to do it again, but thank goodness.